Look about you. Take it all in. Your grandchildren will want to hear everything about this day. The day you drove the traitorous Mason Wands back into the dirt. Starting the game, as you would see in a movie, the players are standing up and the commander is walking in front of you and giving you the battle speech. And then we give you control and you get to play out that scenario right there. When you're running through the castle gate, it feels like what you've seen in Hollywood movies. And we're not just inside the castles, we're taking over the walls, we're going through the city, and then we're going into the final keep. From customizing your face, your scars from battle, to defects, and just the armor, your weapons, there's a lot of player choice in what kind of knight you want to be. The whole personality of the game is meant for you to create your own medieval movie hero. You're not just sort of a bunch of faceless, nameless mercenaries fighting against another faceless, nameless team. There's a real, actual story going into all the battles. Chivalry 2 tells the epic saga of Argon II, who is king of the Agatha Knights, and he is fighting against King Malric of the Mason Order. The Masons and Agathians have unique sets of personalities that help define our in-game factions and reinforce the lore of the chivalry world. The Mason Order is pretty upfront that they're willing to do whatever it takes. The Agathian Knights are the righteous, noble, but when you look under the surface, there's more going on behind the scenes. Suddenly, there's this emotional backstory that's forming behind all the decisions you make in this game. Each map tells a story, and I think that's what makes the maps quite special, especially in our team objective mode. There's a map called Lion Spire. You start out on the beach with all these boats that are just washed up on the shore, and the first thing you do is you immediately are fighting people. In Redhelm, we have an initial siege on the first stage that has trebuchets launching from afar, and you can hear those distant impacts. And then as the battles progress throughout the city, you have different sounds like the panic of the city as it's being plundered. Coxwell is a map that fills the fantasy of the ugliness of medieval times. So it starts with masons rushing into the small village and burning all the houses. And at the very beginning, defenders are actually playing as peasants. So you can feel the tide coming, try to survive as long as you can. <laughs> I made it! We made it! Adding personality, humor, and the extra little juice is always a key component to us. Oh, great. In Chivalry 2, we expanded the voiceover system to include more manual VO options, as well as a slew of dynamic auto VO events. Players can choose voice options during customization to match their ideal on-field personality. I'm gonna rip your heart out through your asshole! We're also letting players change their emotes up as they pick things up in the environment. If you pick up a chicken and you battle cry with it, it's a unique emote compared to if you're just doing it normally. Leave no one alone! The voices for Chivalry 2 really give you a ton of different options. There's the Dark Prince, who's a sadomasochist. Yes, hurt me! He just relishes in the combat and cutting people open, and every time he is hurt, he's like happy about it. You know I am fueled by pain. There's one character, he thinks he is a god. Everything he says is like, oh, you're welcome for saving your life. We all have an ego. Mine is just better. There's a special place in my heart for the Squire Boy, who, like myself, would be completely out of place on a medieval battlefield. <laughs> We're all gonna die! And it's the way he whinges and brown noses his way through a battle and surprises himself when he gets a kill or simply still survive that is very endearing. I soiled myself and nobody cares! <laughs> and so it's a really silly humor that people can do. It shows personality for everyone to express himself. The voices add a layer of comic relief to an otherwise brutal world full of pain screams and death cries. <laughs> The whole point of it is just to crack open a beer, play the game, relax, just stab somebody till you feel better. It's incredibly unwinding. You can pick up this huge medieval hammer and just crush somebody's head. It has a lot to do with doing something you'd never do in your real life and getting to live this fantasy of what if I was a knight in the medieval times. You wouldn't want to go into a medieval battlefield in real life because you lose your head one time, it's gone. The best thing about Shivery is you could probably go find your own head again and, and use it. 